Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Welcome to each of the witnesses. Thank you for being here. Uh, Dr. Layton, uh, this past January, as you know, a memo leaked from the National Security Council uh, which called for nationalizing the 5G mobile broadband networks. Uh, and since then, the administration has been less than clear uh, in rejecting that idea. Um, I and many members of the Senate consider that to be a profoundly bad idea. Uh, that's why Senator Cortez Masto and I together uh, introduced the E-Frontier legislation last week, which would prohibit the federal government from nationalizing our nation's commercial telecommunications network uh, without uh, authorization from Congress. Uh, Dr. Layton, in, in your judgment, what would it mean if the federal government were to nationalize our nation's 5G networks? That would be a disaster. Uh, I, wanna, I saw the press release today, and thank you, and uh, Senator Cortez Masto, for your leadership. It certainly helps me sleep well at night. Um, but I would say if there's one point that we know in telecommunications policy that we have evidenced over and over again is that governments should not be running the telecommunications network. It has been a colossal waste of money, colossal waste of, of energy, and uh, it's not where we should put our resources, particularly when we have private companies who are willing to put up $300 billion to, uh, to, to have uh, uh, all kinds of competitive 5G networks. So it's not where we should put our money. So in your judgment, is the E-Frontier Act the right direction for this committee and, and, and Congress to go? Absolutely. Uh, does, does anyone on the panel disagree? Does anyone think that the federal government nationalizing 5G is a good idea? Uh, Secretary Chertoff, what, what, what are your thoughts on the implications if, if, if the government were to try to nationalize 5G? Well, I, again, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what that would, would look like. I'm not sure exactly what that would look like, but I, in general, I think... I think your microphone is off. In general, I think nationalization of a function like that uh, stifles innovation and puts the government in a position which overreaches in terms of what its proper role is. Uh, Mr. Bladell, there has been considerable attention uh, devoted in, in Congress and, and in the national discussion to the role of tech companies and social media companies uh, engaging in political censorship. Uh, what do you think the role, and, and what does GoDaddy think the role should be of tech companies censoring the speech of others? So thank you, Senator. I can't speak for the entire industry, but from GoDaddy's perspective, uh, we do not want to be an arbitrator of free speech. We don't believe that's an appropriate role for us as a, as a private sector uh, company. Uh, we uh, are uh, supporters of an open and uh, internet that supports free expression and welcomes all views. Um, that said, we do have uh, terms of service for using our platform uh, for communication, and there are some very specific cases that would uh, cause us to suspend or, or terminate service, um, illegal activities, threats of violence, and uh, uh, pharmaceutical sales, and things things that are called out in our um, uh, in our terms of service. So. Uh, we, we, any content complaints that we receive are uh, subject to a case-by-case uh, -case review, and then we decide according to our terms of service. But as a private, co a private sector company, we do not want that role. So I, I think you would not find disagreement when it comes to shutting down criminal enterprises, conduct that, that, that clearly violates criminal law. Uh, what does obviously raise questions is when it's not criminal conduct, it is simply content uh, that may be offensive, that may be wrong, um, but that is not illegal. Uh, and then the question becomes, who should be the gatekeeper? Who decides what speech is permissible uh, and, and, and what speech is not? Uh, have there been instances in your company's history where because of disagreement with content, uh, you, you have shut down uh, access to a website? So typically, uh, that as part of that review, the content would have to contain illegal materials or rise to the level of a direct call for or threats of violence for us to take action. Um, you obviously operate within the tech space. Um, should social media companies, in your judgment, uh, be neutral public forums? Should they respect First Amendment principles and allow 
Uh, as John Stuart Mill put it, the, the cure for bad speech to be more speech rather than a priori censorship. So in, in my view, and I think this is shared by GoDaddy and other uh, companies in our space, is that we want the internet to be as open and welcoming as possible for free expression, and that it's not the role of the, uh, of the platform to judge content uh, on, on whether it's offensive or whether it's allowable. It should only be on those narrow cases of illegal materials. Thank you.